All right, gang, we are near the home stretch now. So I'm just gonna work through tidying up uh, the project manager. So this is what we got. I'm gonna go through and just add some polish now, add, adding all the little pieces in the things like trying to see if we can put a little letter there, um, possibly searching later. I mean, that's what we can do easily there. And then, you know, just fixing up little things like this down the bottom. So let's jump in. Okay, so the first thing that's annoying me is this client name. So let's just jump into the DB and have a look at what we have in terms of clients. Clients we have here. Now, the client can have many projects and a project can have many clients. So what I think I'm gonna do here, just for simplicity, is just grab the first client. So, and let's just see, we've got a client here, yes, okay. So if we close these off and we jump into the project, so this is the project and we're gonna look at a project by itself and here we've hard coded this. What I'm gonna do here is I wanna link, I actually wanna to link to the client. So what we need to do before we can do that, because if we try create a link now, it's gonna crash. Let's set up or scaffold the client's views and controller. The terminal, we're gonna go Rails G scaffold controller and this will be client. Okay, so we've done that. Let's run bin dev again, get started. Now we will have inside here our views, we've got our clients here. Okay, so now we can also just check our routes in here and we're gonna just grab all of these guys. I'm gonna just put them over here. So we've got clients over here, we've got invoices. I just like to add this, um, a comment just to make it easier to find. So invoices here and we leave these top level routes just so that we can use those helpers and we don't break anything for creating and updating because we do have it nested here as well. Just for simplicity right in the beginning, can't be bothered. So we've got clients now. So now if we jump in here, we can actually go and update this link. So in our shared header, let's change this to go to client's path. Okay. Now, there we go, we've got our client list, which is amazing. And now we can see and add this path in. So let's close off this, close off this, inside of projects, project, right here. We're gonna say link, to project dot, you know, let's create a method. Let's go combine client name. All right, so I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna go into the model on a project. We're gonna create a new method here. So we're gonna go def combine client's name. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say self.clients. So the project has many clients, which we need to add here. And this is called clients projects, this table, this join table here. And then has many clients through clients projects, all right? So we're gonna go self.clients.first.title. That's what we're gonna do right now. Let's just first go if self.clients.size is greater than zero. Otherwise, we can just say no client, yeah? So what I've just done here is just future proof this. When in the future, if you want to come in here, we can actually go through and map through each client's go like Ken Grief and someone else. If you're doing a company project, if you're working with companies or something, you could, you could do it there. But for now, I'm just going to return the first one. So I'm just future proofing the method there. So we're going to say link to that and then what and the path for this is going to be clients path. Okay. So this one has no client. But if you click here now we've got this no client no client no client. So there's something client ID 1 projects 1 Client one. So there is a client there for sure. 
Is there something not working with that? All right, so let's have a look at what's going on there. So the combined client's name is if clients.size, so it goes through clients projects. Let's have a look at what's going on in Rails C. So in terminal Rails C, and then we're gonna go project, because project.first, project.clients, there is a client there. So clients.first.title. Okay, so that's definitely a client on that one. Self.clients.size is greater than zero. Clients.first.title. So let's go clients.size. Okay, so what could be happening? So let's just restart our server. Might not pick up on that. No. That's really weird. Okay, let me just see. I've probably done something wrong here. Ah, you know what? There we go. I'm not returning it right there. Sweet, that'll do it. There we go. Ken Grief is the client. All right. And there's no client set on these ones yet. Okay. Now this one, when we click on that client, we actually want to go to the edit client path. And we want to pass in the project dot client. So this is a bit of an interesting one. I think we probably can't actually link here because we could have multiple and that's not going to work. So let's just do that for now. All right, so that's just a string. Okay, that makes sense. And then we can just, if we ever wanted to, we can just add clients in here uh, as a, a little module as well. Okay, so there's the clients. So that's the client name that's been annoying me for a while. Now what we probably want to do here is let's fix up this add project form. So luckily we've been doing a few forms recently, so we can just grab something from, let's open up the projects form and then let's grab the project item form. We also want to just fix, grab the, the first thing we do is the new. So I might just close off the form. So we'll do the new and then on the projects new. So this is where we grab this stuff. And so we go new project, and this is projects form. And we don't need any locals, we just need this except for this project here. So we can get rid of this. Okay, so now when we go new project, that's looking better already. Um, and then let's just see, so that's a project item, so that looks cool. Sweet, and then we want the same thing for the edit project. So if I just change this to projects one slash edit, there we go, we've got the same thing. Okay, so those two screens are good. Now we can jump back into the form. So what do we need? We really just need title. All right, and then we need this bottom bit here. So let's grab this first line and the errors, so that'll be there. So now this is gone, this is gone. Then what we want is, let's grab the title here, stick that under there, there. So we don't need that anymore. And then we've got the header hidden here. We definitely don't want that purple button. So let's grab these two. Let's grab this. Let's grab these two hidden fields and replace them. Okay, and then the back two projects. All right, so that's where we're gonna go. And this is gonna be projects path and there is no parameters required. All right, let's see what that looks like. Project item, yep, that makes sense. That needs to be project and change out project item to project. Okay. New project, there we go. Now that matches everything else. All right, so let's grab a new project, 
whoops, wrong one. Just cut that piece out. Let's grab a new project here. Let's go look at Byron Bay. 29 Keats, Byron Bay. Keats what? Ah, oh, three Somerset Lane. Let's try that. Three summer set lane, Byron Bay. Create that. There we go. Now we're inside of the project edit screen. We can start adding. There's our main dwelling. That's awesome. So we can manage that. I wonder what we can do here with these buttons. Okay, so we also need a bit in the edit actually, we need to be able to change the client. So we haven't we haven't done that yet. So let's go here. So what we want is client, client ID. And this needs to be a drop down. But now what we need to do is we actually have to pass in. I wonder if we can policy scope from here. So let's go try. So we go new. Let's go clients here and we're going to go policy scope. Client. Okay. Because we only want the clients that belong to this um, builder or organization. So that's, we need to actually go back to the edit. So it can't use policy scope, client policy. Okay, you know why that is? Because we haven't built it. All right, let's generate Rails G policy. It's pundit, pundit, policy, client. Sweet. So now if we go into our policy, so remember policies is for, are for scoping. So we're gonna need this. So easiest thing is grab this project policy. Grab that, chuck it in there. User admin or organization users, we're gonna join now. So this will be on organization through, this will go through clients projects, right? So we're gonna join, firstly, we're gonna go through clients projects. And then we're gonna go through clients projects. Let's see if we can fix this join. So I'm going to join clients projects on clients projects dot project ID is equal to sorry left join projects on projects dot ID is equal to clients projects dot project ID. So now we're at the projects level. Now we need to join on to organizations projects. Why is that just left that join there? So we're gonna left join organizations projects on organization project or project ID equals it to projects.id. Right, so now we're at the organizations projects. Now we can see that the final piece is that an organizations, so we need to join the organization, to make sure that the users organizations, so where organizations projects dot user ID, sorry, dot organization ID, something inside of user to organization IDs. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see if this works. So we need to just set that policy. Let's see if it works. If we jump in here, we need to restart our server. All right. So what are we getting? Let's have a look. Okay, we need a policy scope. Is that doing that? Let's have a look inside of views, projects form, and that comes through new policy scope client. Okay, we're not actually using it yet. That's why it's probably not throwing. So we need to add in, let's go, where are we in project item? Let's get that select box for supplier. Where are you, mister? or even the category that'll do. Grab this. Projects form. So this will be client ID. And this will be clients.map, client.title client ID. Now this will probably crash. No, there we go, it worked. Okay, awesome. Uh, I did not expect that. So here we go. We can now select our client. 
Okay, so I think what we can do here, let's test it. We need to have a little, we need a little edit button up here, similar to this button there. So let's do that quickly. So we go projects, and then we're gonna look for master project renders the project there. And then here, so this, we actually need to put this all inside of a div class flex flex call bump that in because that's the actual title there and then here we have our actions and this is this is not going to be grid anymore it's going to be flex justify between just let's see quickly that's edit okay What is going on here? Flex, flex, row, item center. Don't need any of this right now. Space Y, P6. Um, okay, flex, flex, call, flex. Wonder if we need this. Let's get rid of that one and that one. There we go. Okay, just tidying up. So now we need to item center on that guy. Center that. So now what we will make this button will be a link to edit project. So this will be edit project. Now, the only problem is we're using this view multiple times. And this is just going to say edit. Okay, so that's good. But now see, we've got this here, which we don't want. So we need to actually create a different password. I reckon we move this out this um, pro into the project header itself and not render this guy here. So let's pull this out. So this is the actual header. So inside the master project, let's chuck that there. Don't need the div ID there. So now in here, yep, so we need to just change these into instance variables here okay fix that up all right so now we've got this and then we'll probably get rid of it what we've done here let's see what that looks like now that's back to normal I reckon we can just undo all our changes here though. Oops, we need the client names there. Okay, cool, fixes that up. And then we've got this edit. So we've got a different view here. We're gonna need this view here. And we're gonna put that in a sub project as well. So now when we're inside of that, we've also got that there. And I wonder if we even need that there. Possibly not. Um, let's just go here. Gap to. Chuck that on the master as well. We could create a shared component here. Realistically, we could say for a header. We go back here. Now, I mean, I guess you can edit the main dwelling, but there is no client on a main dwelling. That would be, that wouldn't be different here. Okay, so we don't need that there. Let's look at the form. I think we need to have some margin bottom there. MB2. So form. No, that's actually already got one there, MB2. Sweet. Okay. 
So what we want to change it in the projects is we only want to show this if it is a master, right? So if we have if we have a parent project ID, we don't want to show this broken something. See if it still works like this. Yep. Ah, that's what I'm missing. An if. What? Yep, modulus there. Cool. So that's a master. So why are you still showing up? Ah, uh, because that's a that's a um param in the top here. So this realistically how are we doing this? So this is so I guess we can say if so new will you can't create a new let's just go here. So if we go in here, we can't add new sections at the moment. Oh wait, yes we can. Okay, so that's got the, the parent project ID, so it's not showing. So that's fine, but it's when, so we need to say if, so if no that and um, project.is master. Okay, let's see if, there needs to be an and I think. Let's see. I feel like the logic's a bit sloppy there. Back to pro. So you can edit there. You can add new. Yeah. Then when you're in here, you can add. Yeah. We don't have edit for these yet. No, that's not right. So that's not right. So project is master. This is should not be a master project. Main dwelling project two. Let's just double check that. No, that's not right. Why are you coming through here, champion? Okay, it's because that's an all. But the only problem is that shows. Okay. Um, okay, I'll need to think of that better logic there. Okay, so the what to do there is, I've just wrapped this. If project is a new record and that's not, and parent project is not present, then we render that. Otherwise, it is a persisted record and it then has to be master okay that's it that's the simple logic just was evading my brain so that's there so now we can now edit and access all of these guys yeah so this edit project that shouldn't go back to here so when we're inside this guy we want to change the logic okay so realistically this will be different. So we're going to say if project dot new record else and so new record goes back to projects. Otherwise, we're going to go back to and then this will be in here. It'll be project dot title. And this will be edit projects path, project path. And this will be project. All right, let's see what that looks like. So edit project goes back to Halls Road. So it's not the edit path. What is it? It's the view path. So it'll be project path. So edit back to Halls Road. That should be selected. Have we set that client ID? Okay, so we're not going to be able to get the client ID because, yeah, we should have probably just made this a one just for s simplicity because this is actually a many. So it's a bit messy because you realistically could have multiple here. That's okay. So edit back to Halls Road. If we go here, new back to projects. If we go here, main dwelling, edit back to main dwelling. Cool. And if we go add, back to projects. So that, 
so. So when we hit this one, so if there's a parent with same thing here, so if there's a parent project ID, what we want to do is back to projects. Now in here, I might even do, it's, it's an else if here. So this is, if it's a new record and parent project ID is present, we now know this is a sub. So this will go, this will go back to the parent project. Um, and then, so this will be project path. Okay, so if we're in a sub project, it should say back to parent project, boom. Right. Okay, that all works now. All right, so there we go. These are all clickable. These are all clickable. I almost reckon we can lose this it's actually just confusing having both those there. So let's get rid of that. So if we go into master project and we've got our projects here, let's get rid of actions. I'm going to get rid of this width here and then I'm going to get rid of this. This one table with a single, there we go. Okay. There, I want these to be clickable as well. So that's inside of, a project sub project and the spaces and here we're going to do a link to as well so let's go here project space dot title and it's going to be the project space path get rid of that Cool. We can now click on these as well, and we can also do the manage. We need to fix this up, the add button. So let's do this edit project button. I reckon we just turn it into like this manage link, similar one here. So grab this class. So that's inside of our master project. It's this one. That needs to be a colon. Why are you not working? Add project, where am I? I'm in a master project. So I need to go here. Ah, oh, no, I'm looking at the wrong button. I'm here. Okay, I've just stuffed that. Get rid of that. Okay, I need to look at this head up here, this one. There we go, that's better. Now let's do the same. Here, so on the sub project at the top, So when we're in, in the main dwelling, yes. Okay. So we don't need this button anymore. We probably, when we hit in here, we probably want the delete button. So we can get rid of this stuff. So down the bottom, it's all this nonce. We get rid of that. Cool. And go into here. This will have the same. So we got edit. Back to projects. You got the link there. Destroy. Same concept. So we get rid of all that. gone all right that's looking cleaner already okay so this the main thing here is just this clients thing that we need to fix up that like realistically to to do that we're going to need like a multi-select component or an ugly way is like a checkbox you could like check on the customers like that's probably what we're going to do in for this like prototype stage just a little checkbox you can click on all the customers 
So we can do all the clients. So we can do that. Um, what are we looking at here? This is all good. What I'll do here as well is set these little icons. Okay, so we can, this will just be W, F. So we can have all those going, okay? Okay, next thing. Gonna fix up this little guy and this button here. So I'll do that button first. So it's the copy of this one. So that is living inside of a project space. So that is in here. Let's just have a look, project space. That's the top there, edit here. So let's just fix this button. So it's just edit space, crop, cut, cut this path, bang, get rid of that here, edit space, perfect. So we need to fix this form. So the images, yeah, it's a bit, a bit odd there, but anyway, let's just clean this up. All right, so project space form. And this is the projects form. Let's get rid of this. And then we're gonna change margin bottom two, if new record. Okay, so we need to fix this. Yep, and then we're gonna do the same actions that we had. So we had those actions inside of, where were they? Just did them. I'll just grab this here. So the images are living, okay, that's the hidden field, that's fine. And then we need to just fix this button here. All right, someone's outside there. Okay, so we got our kitchen thing. We also need our back as well. So that was inside of, I swear, that was in, where were we editing that? That was in project, project items possibly. No, but anyway, we'll grab this back link. So what are we looking at here? Back to project space. Project space path, back to project space title. Back to kitchen. Now the problem here is when we go here, add, so, in here, add space, We're not gonna have that. So, same concept that we had here inside of projects is if it's a new record. We don't need this though. And then we're gonna go else. So, and right project space dot new record and then if it is a new record we want to go back to project and this will be project path like that let's see if that works um we're missing the id there so we can grab params project id because that'll be in the path Okay, back to project. So if you try and add a space, you go back to the project. If we manage a space, back to the kitchen. All right, so inspiration, that's nothing there right now. So probably let's hide that if it's not nothing set. So that is inside of the, are we in the show? Inspiration. So we can probably just say here, 
if project space dot images dot size greater than zero what you'd want to do there in the future is definitely make that like a Dropbox style thing. Um, what is that? Pro no, project spaces, project space. Okay, that should be wrapped around all of this. There we go. So this is what a blank space looks like. So that's cool. Secondary dwelling. I had a space. Now, yeah, that, that works. Okay, um, all right, so that's all good. There's another little delete this space. So we can get rid of that in the project space here. We'll get rid of that. Cool, that tidies that up. Okay. I'm just stepping through, basically just seeing where we can tidy these things up. So kitchen. All right, so let's let's do, this is all looking good now. So let's do this little guy here. So <clears throat> we're just gonna, I think what we can do is we're just gonna do it. I'm gonna do one color here. I'm not gonna try and do multi-color. I think we can probably just make this black. So let's go and have a look at that. So that's inside of, project space show and then it's inside of this category group right and then it's inside of that it's actually the project item all right so let's look if we got a picture we're rendering there okay so now what we're going to say is else maybe what we can even do is just set the bg here to black always let's just see because i think what that's going to do is yeah, give us black regardless. Okay, so that's cool. Um, we don't need a border anymore if we're going to be black. Yeah. And then what are we going to do is just... I mean, I don't know if black might be too harsh, but... Can we go grey 700? Yeah, or even a 600. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just render. Yeah, let's do something like that. And then we'll just render. A, ah, that's probably too harsh, to be honest. Let's go BG gray 50 with the border. Like that, that's a bit softer. And then what we're going to say here is else. So we're going to render the image if we have one. Otherwise, we're going to just grab. Um, project item dot title and then we're going to say dot first and then we're going to go upcase that W okay so then we just need to make this font a little bit bigger so let's so we're going to have a picture there otherwise we're going to have like this little font cool so we're going to say text to Excel let's see what that looks like yeah, that looks pretty cool. Sweet. That's pretty basic, but it just gives you a little, a bit more interest there rather than just an empty box. And we could even go um, font gray 200, just so it like fades away. Is it text gray? Yep, something like that. So let's go maybe a 400 or a 300 like that okay sweet that just looks cool and then you can add a picture there all right edit just small like that i feel we almost let's make that button Let's make this button similar. So what have we got here? We just got, uh, so we've got no class here at the moment. So let's add one. And let's grab what we just did in project spaces. This one. So where are we? 
chuck that in there. Okay, now we just want to fix that to match this other thing. So we did this small button and that was on, where it, which was area was that? Where were you mate? There, the add project button. So that's on the quotes. So if we go to projects, quotes, and then we look for that little button, this one. Okay. Kitchen, there we go, there's the edit button. Now we don't want the full black. So we're gonna go, where's the background? We don't want BG primary, so we don't want a BG but we do just want a border. And we want text primary. That's what we want. And then we want, where are we putting our margin? Could be this gap here. There we go. All right. That's pretty cool. All right. That's looking really, really cool. It obviously needs a bit of design work like this, like as you go um, and this actually gets used, I'd definitely try and, you know, get some proper design in here just so that these things pop more. So you can kind of see that that's like a, a big thing. That's a main thing. These comments, try not to let them take away from this piece. So let's see. It's not really much we can see here. But that's pretty cool. I think that looks good. I think I'm pretty happy. There's only this, this is maybe this create comment button is a bit too hectic. So let's maybe swap that out to a like grayed out one like we've been doing here. So inside of this, we're gonna grab, so it would be, let's see if we even like the project spaces. Edit space, this one. Copy that. And we're gonna say now, that is going to be on the form for comments. So let's grab this guy, paste him. That's better. Okay, and we want we want um, cursor pointer. There we go. That's better. All right. So that's now it, it, the black button stands out more. Okay, that's what I'm trying to achieve here. We and the create comment kind of fades away a little bit more. Just makes it clearer where our action buttons are. Okay. These are kind of secondary um, things that we want to look at. All right, main dwelling and then here. Okay, cool. Let's jump into this avatar. Let's see this little avatar here. So that is going to live inside of the shared header. And what does this look like? Okay, so it's looking for a placeholder image, which doesn't exist. And we're never going to have user actually have user here. Change this into spaces too. Oh man. Okay. So we're not going to have a user menu toggle right now. What's this thing? This is some sort of SVG. That little thing which is the logo, but we don't have a logo. And that's also the home. So let's just kill that. We don't need it. All right, so we've got a div. I'm just trying to format this nicely so I can actually see what's going on here. 
projects users, yeah, clients users. That's cool. Now, it's a button. It's a toggle user menu. Don't need that. So, what does this look? What does this do? We will need a little menu here that you can click on. Um, so instead of an image, I'm going to render. So let's just see if this works. No, current user. So we just need to go. Okay, so I'm just going to grab the same concept, yeah? Just grabbing the email and upcasing the first letter. And we want to also give this a border. That's it. Um, let's just make the gap two here. I need that. I guess that lines up with that there. Okay. Now, this is determining whether we need to have like a an account, like a where you can click and sign out, or like a little drop down here. Could have that. I'm just going to leave that there for now. Um, but I want to work on this client screen because I think that's kind of core to to this here. I might even change this because we don't need search right now. I might change this just to a projects header. So let's just grab um, a form and we're going to grab it from the edit. So I'm going to grab this and then the projects index. I'm going to grab this here. Edit project, and then from here we're gonna have this guy. So drop it there. Let's just see, it's gonna duplicate a bit. That's fine. Projects. Okay. Um, and then here we're going to just say gap two, maybe four. Okay. And then I'm just going to get rid of all this. We do need this button here. So let's grab the same concept we've been doing with all these guys is this is going to be flex, justify tween item center and then we're going to grab the same thing we've been doing with all these guys it's probably probably this ad project i think that will be the best so projects so if we look at the projects master project this one ad project here So we don't have a project ID, parent project ID there. So we go back, yep. So this one, flex items center. That's right, we don't need this guy again. So we grab this, chuck that there, get rid of this and this. There we go. And then we get rid of all of this guy. There we go. So now we have that kind of consistent header, right? Okay. That feels all right. Sweet. That looks pretty good. All right. Clients. Let's do the same thing. Copy this, 
clients index and this will be new client path add client clients this will be clients clients and then client and all I mean almost you could just from here you'd probably just let's see what this looks like clients add client I'm not 100% sold on this button yet I think it looks a bit funny it looks almost a bit small but let's jump into the clients controller I'm going to policy scope this so just add the policy scope around the block here. We don't need the all. You can also say authorize. And then that just means we have to have inside of our client policy, we need to have above here, def index. And this we can just say, um, true, yeah. Realistically, we're gonna just say user dot, let's, let's, let's create an organization user method. Now application policy. Okay. Now we should be scope there. So only organization users can see the clients route. Okay. So now we need to actually show these clients. So actually, actually, I think I've done something wrong here with the clients because there's a client, a client has an organization ID. So I've gone through here and done this really complicated thing, but realistically, we just need to say clients joins organization and then we can just get rid of this. Yeah, that makes it way simpler. Okay. So client joins organization and then we're going to say organizations ID is in the users organizations ID and that's how you know if you can access now that should be a much simpler so if we go into projects now just check that We've still got Ken grief but we should see our clients rock up here now all right so that's the clients so clients dot each now let's see why You should be coming through here, mate. So render client. What is a client? A client is a literal nothing. Okay. Well, that makes sense. So if we go fix this, um, you are in a partial. So we're going to go client.title. We're just going to render that up for now. There it is. I've got one client. So what I want to do here is I don't want to render this out in this grid. I want to render this out in a table. So let's grab a table from our project main master project. This thing. So let's grab this table. Where are you there? And chuck that here. Okay, and we're going to render clients.each, client, get rid of this line. Okay, get rid of that one. Okay, something's not 100% right because we need, I think we need to wrap it here. Oh, it's because this is all wrapped inside of this guy. Close those divs. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Got our table. So Ken Grief, what are we storing a client table at the moment? Literally just a name. So we'll we'll send you straight to edit client here. Um, I don't want that much gap here. Can even get rid of that to be honest. 
That looks all right. Okay. And in inside of a client, we can even list, if we want to, we could even show all their projects. I wonder if we should drop these titles down as well. So this is a cleanup thing. So this is kind of how I work through these, these things. I just slowly go through and just decide, and make little changes, just to make it feeling nice. So where are we? So this is in, actually in the index page and that renders the project here. So this isn't, let's just drop that font down and see what it looks like. Yeah, that fits a bit nicer. Okay, clients can, we're gonna to go to the edit path instead there. So this is gonna be the edit client path. Okay. All right, that's the edit client screen. Riveting stuff. Um, you can add a client too. Yep. Um, and then from there, you also have to add users as well. But anyways, that's all good. Let's go. So edit client. So now we need the edit form. So I'm just going to close all these again. Copying out form style. So let's go clients edit. So this is client's form. Client is client. All right. So we need to do it on the new as well, yeah? Sweet. All right, so we've got our little forms rendering now. Okay, so now we just need to add in our fields. So into our form, we're gonna go into our client's form. It's a very similar process for all these things, you can see. We go into the new, the edit, set up that kind of layout, then we go into the form, update the form. Okay, so now with updating the form, let's go and grab something we've done before. So here we'll grab, let's go to the project item. I think that is the cleanest form. So firstly, we've got to add a class to go full. Here, we need, we got the errors there, that's good. And then we're gonna go the title because that's really the only thing right now. And then down here in the end, this guy, don't need that, don't need that. And then this is so when we're editing, so we're gonna say back to clients. And this is just the clients path. Don't need any params. There we go. Back to clients, update clients. Client dot update forbidden attributes. Perfect. So what do we permit? Title. That's it. And I think eventually organization ID, yeah. But for now, when we create a client, we're gonna set the organization ID to equal the current user dot. Now this is where you could introduce default organization ID. So when a user has, has belongs to many organizations, you could have is default. And by doing that, it means that you can just grab that. So you're always gonna just assign the default organization. But what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna grab that. Okay, I'm gonna grab the first organization ID from the user, just for simplicity. 
I'm just showing you how to do these things like a real, like this isn't very much an MVP as fast as we can go. But from there, you want to definitely, imp there's a lot to improve basically. So we want to go here to the client's URL once we've created. And the same here, once you've updated, we also want to go to the client's URL. Okay. So if we go back here now and change this to grief and change this to griefs, we've got update, yeah. Now what I'm gonna do here as well is I wanna add in that little projects piece. So I'm gonna go client projects. I'm gonna create a little partial like we did before. And then I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna copy the projects, project invoices. Right, and then this is going to just be called projects here. Um, do we do that? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know what? We can go new project path, and then in here we can say client ID is equal to client. I mean, we pass in the client here, client ID. Okay, and this is add project. Now this is gonna be client dot projects dot size. Um, and this can be the same. We can just have the title of the project here. We don't need anything else. So we're gonna just go, so this is client dot projects. project link to project.title and it's going to be the project path okay so this should be showing something I uh, yep that makes sense I haven't added it in so if we go into the clients and now we're in the edit screen so we've done that and then we're going to render the partial here. So we're going to say render partial client slash client projects. Locals will be client client. And we got to do that. Okay, new project path. And we don't pass that in. Cool. So we've got our client and then we've got their projects here. Now if you click on that, so that was just a rem remnant of this guy. So we need the, the notices. So if we go into clients so projects, it's got this little notice there. So if we go into the client screen, that just needs to come here. So that when we update it, client, it actually flashes there. So if we hit update, there we go. And then if we click that, it's gone, okay? All right. And then when you add a project, there's a client ID here. So we need to set that. So we can do that when we go new projects, controller, Project.new client. So we're going to push in the param client ID if okay. So if we're creating a new one, but we do need to change this. It's not. It's not a select box. All right, so that's your client. Let's see if we can add a client. Let's say, um, this is a, there we go. No new projects when we hit that. Okay, cool. Excellent. This is all looking pretty good. Just need to fix this. And what's this header thing above here? Um, I wonder what this is. 
get rid of all this. It's not the gap. It's this one. I wonder if we can get rid of that whole gap. But it's adding a gap there. Maybe we're gonna have to get rid of that gap. And just add an MT here. Okay, cool. All right, so now a client needs to have users as well. So let's add those as well. All right, to add the client users, let's go in here and same concept, let's create a partial. We're gonna go client users.html.eib all right grab that chuck that in there users we're gonna go add user um this will be a new user path and that's the client id so now we're the user we have to probably tell we probably we're gonna say here we're gonna go user type and this will be client user see because we have at the moment within our roles we've got organization user and we probably want a client user as well so let's just seed that quickly we've got the user role i mean we could just do the user role let's just do that so that's going to be user role right so we're going to say role id let's do this and we're going to say role dot find by key user. Yeah, I think that's what we want. Yep. So we're going to pass the role ID through there when we're adding it from this section. Okay. Um, now users, what do we have for users again? First name, last name, email. So let's do that. Let's go bamang. First name, last name, email. Link to user dot. All right, so I'm going to add a new property on side of on top of user. Def. So here we're going to go user full name, and that's just literally going to be a string. I'm just going to say self dot first name and then self dot last name. Um, and, th and this is going to, what I'm going to say is if self dot first name dot present. We're going to return that. So we need to remember to return. Otherwise, what I'm going to return is um, no name set. Okay, so that'll give us that. And then this is gonna be the edit user path. And that's a user, user, client.users.eachdo. All right, so now inside of a client, inside of the client edit form, I'm gonna render here, we're gonna render I think we're going to go client users first of that. New user path. Okay, we've got to scaffold that because we haven't done that. So we're going to go Rails G scaffold controller user. Okay. I thought that was going to collide for a second, but that did not. Let's see, that should be fine now. Client.users. Okay, so let's go into our model. Client doesn't have any users yet. So that goes client, clients, client projects, and then we need client users, okay? So we need a new um, join table. So let's do that. Rails G model clients user. Okay, and we're gonna run our server again. Now, what is this? Um, 
model do. This is just a join. So this is just going to be t dot belongs to client t dot belongs to user. Okay, Rails DB migrate that. Ah, wrong one. Bin dev. Here we go. Okay, cool. Now back to that model. So user has many organizations users. So the same thing here has many clients users. Okay. Okay. So a user can belong to many clients or it can belong to many organizations. Okay. <clears throat> it's obviously a little bit overcomplicated for what we need. We could have just made one user, a client has a user belongs to a client, but because a user is a generic model, we kind of do need this could have had a polymorphic join there, but here we've got two different tables. So in here, we're going to go belongs to client belongs to user. Okay. All right. So, and then a client, has many users. So it has many clients users and has many users, right? Now that should fix up this error. There we go. All right. So there's the users and there are no users yet. Okay. Same thing that we've been doing. I think we need to say if client.users.size, we just need to fix that typo there and that will now make that table disappear. Yep. Now we can add a user. Okay, there we go, back to our forms. So let's go, what does the user look like? So the edit page, the new page, we need to grab from project items, new, let's grab that, new user. So what do we need? Just this for now. users form new user copy that that edit user right there we go sweet add user okay so now we are going to do something here so in the form we need to do our standard stuff so add the class Now we want this, we want this, so we don't need the images, we need this, use a new record back to users. Don't need that. Okay, back to users. That's the users path. Back to user title. That's the user path. This is the edit user path. Form submit. Let's see what that looks like. Back to users. So we haven't set that up yet. That's fine. I'm wondering what we do here. We probably want to pass through the client ID here actually when we're editing, when we're creating so that we can actually pick that up through here and go back because we were in clients and when you hit this, so that's inside of edit client. That's in client users. So when we add a new user, we want to also pass in the client ID here. Okay, so we got the client ID there and the role ID. So you can see it down there, we got client ID one. Now, inside this form, 
I want to have a hidden field here. So let's grab a hidden field. Okay, so we're going to say client ID. So chuck that there. That's going to be that. Then we're going to have role ID here. And then I also want to have, while we're here, organization ID. Because when we create a new user for an organization, we're also going to chuck that through there. Okay. New user. Sweet. So the first thing is first name. All right, then we're going to have last name. We could probably do this in a split field. So let's grab that form from our project item. Put something with a split field in it. This one. We go first name. Last name. We also want to be able to set here, we're going to set the email and the password. So we're going to go email and password here. Now usually we probably want password and password confirmation. But because you're creating a user, I don't know. Um, let's just leave that for now. So first name, last name, email, password. Let's see what else is there. Phone. Okay, so let's do this. Let's change this to phone. And then let's make the password the confirmation password. So password. I believe it's password confirmation. Let's just check. That will be inside of controllers, identity, password resets, password confirmation. Yep. Yep. Okay, cool. And then this is not a number field. This is called a password field. So phone is not a number field, it's a text field. Last name is a text field. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Verified. Okay, cool, that's how we create a user now. So we've got our client ID and our role ID going up because we set them in, if we just double check that. So we got, should have hidden fields down here. We've got user client ID one, organization ID nothing, role ID two. All right, sick, all right, that's good. Okay, so the next piece is the controller. So what you will notice is we have inside of our controllers already the registrations controller. Now this is more conf um, concerned with self-registration because what you can see is when you create a user, it logs them in and welcome you've signed up successfully and send email verification. We don't need to do that. Um, it's, it's different with when you're creating a user on behalf of someone else. Okay. <clears throat> so like something like this, we could probably trigger automatically, but it's going to be handled now by this thing here. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to permit some params. So that's our first name, last name, password. Password confirmation. Um, we're going to go email. We're going to go phone. We're going to go, we don't need organization ID and stuff like that because we're going to handle that elsewhere. Okay, so this almost calls for a service because it's going to be a bit of logic. It's going to be like different, it's going to split in different ways. It's going to go one way as organization user, one way as a client user. Um, so let's just see what we can do here. Okay, so we need a set. So if we get supplied a client ID, we want to create a client user. 
That's what we want. And we want to also assign. Yeah, let's let's create a service, right? So we're going to go in here. Services, new folder, users, set up new user.rb. Okay. I just find it a little bit easier to reason about all these things just in here. So users module, set up new user. A lot of boilerplate that I'm just going to grab. Current user is important, so we will get that. And then we need user here. So we want to know who's creating this. Okay, so we're going to assign that and then here we've got user. This is for logging like and like auditing, like if you want to know like who's creating these things. So firstly, we're going to assign, assign organization so what are we going to get? So we're going to get in a user here. We also want to get the params, right? So we want to go params equals params. This is where it gets a bit ugly, params, params, or an empty object. So these are the actual controller params that are coming in because the user is going to get the sanitized params, but we also, there's certain things like we want to know what's the role ID. Like the role ID will get sanitized so we can actually pass that through. We can allow that. We allow that. Um, the only thing here that we can't allow is we cannot allow a user to become, be passed through as a role of admin. Right? So we have to make sure that that is never assigned to admin. So the, e the easiest thing is like, we can just check here, reassign role if admin, right? So we'll pass the user in here. I'm going to say if user dot role is equal to role dot find by key admin. I mean, we can even just fail straight up, you know, we're going to say if user, we're going to say return right. We don't want to let anyone create admins full stop. Not going to happen. We can just create admins, um, in other ways <clears throat> we can seed them or do it by an admin UI. Okay, so the next piece is we're gonna say def assign organization or def assign client. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if, and let's go here, we're gonna pass in the user, we're gonna pass in the params. If params, now let's see what we what we have. So we're passing it through is a user user organization ID, the user client ID. Okay. So we're going to say if params dot dig user client ID. Then we're going to say user dot cli um, clients client ID. Sorry, is going to be. this and I, I want to check that it's present as well yeah then we're going to assign that yeah and then we're going to return user and then this is exactly the same for here If organization is user organization, then assign user organizations ID. Okay. Now the other piece that we saw in the registration controller was this thing, send email verification. So we can do that in here as well. So we can send that later if we want. Um, what else is in there? So that's logging them in and creating a session, sending the email verification and that. So we don't need any of that. Okay. 
Sweet. Okay, that looks pretty simple. So that sets up the user. We've got the email, we've set everything else up. Organizations, users, we've created and we've done client. Okay, so let's see if that works. So let's grab it from projects because we've done that before. Get this whole block. And we also want to authorize here. Okay, so we're going to go users, set up new user. And then we're going to authorize. So now we need to make sure we have that policy. So we're going to generate that policy. So we go Rails G Pundit Policy User. Okay. User policy. Now what we want to do here, so we're in the create method. So we don't ever access um, users directly, so we don't need a scope right now. But for create, we want to do something. So we want to say, if resource dot role is equal to role dot find by key, and this will be organization user. Then we need to, so if you're trying to create an organization user, you must be a member of the organization, okay? If you're trying to create a client user, again, you must be, that that client must be, must belong to your organization, okay? It's not called client user, it's just called user. So let's do the organization user first. So what we're gonna say here, the, the user, so can you create an organization user? It, you can, as long as the user's organization has a user. So as long as the resource dot organization IDs include, so uh, we need to do our one that we did before, this one. So the user organization, so it's the resource organization IDs. It's actually called the record, sorry. So it's record. So the current user organization IDs and the record IDs must be present. And you must also be an organization user. I mean, you know what? Return false if not organization user so if you're not an organization you can't create users full stop anyway so now what we're going to say is here we're going to say return right so you can create an organize if the the record we're trying to create which is a user its role is an organization user then you have to be the user that's logged in has to belong to the organization that the record belongs to. And that's where we're creating that intersection and finding that ID, okay? That's the first one. The second one is very similar, the client. So the user organization IDs must include the record organization ID, okay? So that's a little bit simpler, that one because a user will have, could have many, could, you know, I'm, I'm user one, but I'm creating an, a client user. So wait, this is actually wrong. So it's not the record won't have it. It'll be the record dot clients dot clients client IDs. So the record.clients. So I wonder if we can do this, we could create a method here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go, where are we, user policy. So I'm gonna say user client IDs equals record 
dot clients dot map and then we grab all the organization id so it's actually sorry user client organization ids and then we're going to do the same thing here we're going to do this overlap this intersection so the current user that's logged in's organization ids must have an intersection with the user client ids okay and that's what will let us create. Sure. Okay. Let's see. Can I do something? Um, password. Not allowed to create this user. Okay. Why not? Client ID was one. Organization ID was not set. So the organization ID will need to be set. So we can do that in our here. So we're going to set a default here. And I'm going to set this to organization IDs as an array. No. No, we don't want to assign the user to a default organization. So it should have a client ID. So record.clients. I wonder if those rec that record clients is not set yet. Set up new user. So let's put here, puts and also I want to see puts user dot interesting that that's not coming through. That should be setting it here. I guess it's just client IDs. It still should be able to, I thought it would be able to get through there. That's fine. So that's coming through empty. What we could do is that. So we actually just do this instead. To actually get the model not just the ID there. I wonder if this will work for both of these, but let's just give it a spin. Go away, mate. What is going on here? Uh, it's good to take a little break sometimes in your brain. We have to do this. User equals assign client. Assign organization. Then return the user. We're not even, I'm not even doing anything. So let's see if that fixes it. Still no. Um, I wonder if it needs to commit first. Okay, I think I also know what else is going on. Something really cool that I just thought I'd quickly show you. When there's an error like this, if you have the gem file and you have web console gem, you can actually jump straight in and start using the console here. So I can actually see what that instance variable is right there, which is really powerful.
So keep that in mind. But what I'm doing here, or not doing, is I'm not passing in the params like a little noodle. So let's try that again. There we go. So we're getting through now. Email can't be blank. Sick one. All right. What's the problem now? Still not wanting to take that. There's no client ID. Why not? So that hasn't been sent through. You can see that there. This guy. That was the right form. I can see it there. Why is that empty? Value one. There we go. Okay, something just must have tripped out there. But there's the user created now. All right. There we go. Sweet. Let's fix that little form. So we, we added the user after a bit of rigmarole, just on my behalf, not just being an idiot. Um, so users, so we're inside of clients. Client users. So here we got first name, last name, email. Don't want to link. We should, you know what we should even do here? Change this to full name. And then change this to phone. Okay, no phone number, that's not set. So we can go phone number. I wonder, uh, I wonder if phone's just set to an empty, empty, so that we can go here. There we go. All right, we don't want bold here or medium. What is this doing? Back to user.title, okay. Okay. Role must exist. So we only want to set that. Where's the role? So we actually only want to add that in. So this is throwing. So what we want to say is, can we add an if here? Don't want to send that up because it's setting up a blank role and you can't have a blank role. So, um, so we actually have to wrap this whole thing. So you can't do what I just did there. Let me see if there's a little helper. So just for the sake of speed, I'm just going to add that in here. I mean, before I do that, let's just see if I can do this. Just chuck that there. Let's see.
Okay, so that's taken that away. So that's cool. So just append if down the back here. So I'm going to do the same for all of these. I only want to send them up if we've actually got them. Okay. All right. So let's go can grief. Email has already been taken. That's fine. So I think it's losing these params when it re renders. That's what's happening. It's when there's an error. It's losing those params. So that's quite frustrating. Okay, that's all right. That's a little bug for now. I don't love it, but I'm not going to get stuck on that. Um, okay, so we can now add users. We don't, what's this? Users list and clients. So the final piece is just the users list here. So let's jump into that. So actually, I'm not going to do that um, scaffolding there because it's exactly the same as this. It's just you, we've all seen how to do that. I think what I want to look at here is a sign out button and then the sign in button just to come to polish off this whole thing. This will be the last one. So let's just quickly jump into that. Okay, so inside of uh, the views, the shared, let's have in next to this header, let's have, I don't think this needs to be a button. This is going to be a div. But in here, we're going to have a uh, link to. And this will be sessions. I think, what is this path called? S sessions. Destroy. Destroy session path. And then um, method. Delete. And this will be sign out. Let's see if that works. Destroy sessions path. Let's have a look at what that's called inside of Rails C. Sorry, not Rails C, Rails routes. Sessions, where are ya? Sessions. Delete. Sign in, sign up, sessions, delete. It's probably just session path. Oh, really? Um, Okay, we need a sign out. We need to look, find out the sign out link. So that'll be inside of a view. So we can see how that works. Views, sessions, index, log out. So we need the session here. So we can get the current session. It should be inside of the controller. Current.session. All right, so we can pass in that. There we go. There's our sign out button. That's not sitting in the right place at all. Um, so that needs to be div. Okay, and then we need to, it's got a margin left auto here. Cool. Now let's give this guy, we can jump chuck it straight on there. 
Um, we can go here, we can go class text small. All right, and then we just click sign out. So why, okay. Method delete, it could just be something that I've done there. Index button two, button two. Okay, it has to be a button. Okay, cool. That's fine because that's saying once you signed out. All right. So that's saying it can't find the current user. So realistically, we only we want to only show this if current. Right. There we go. That shouldn't show either, actually. So this whole thing goes here. There we go. I mean, realistically, even this, that shouldn't show. But anyway, that's all good. Let's uh, fix this up. <clears throat> so now we've got this sessions here and new, this is the sign in. Okay. So let's grab our old faithful here and chuck it down here. And this is going to be sign in. And then we've got these two notices. So we need to send them somewhere. So chuck them there. Okay. Then we've got sign in. And then we've got a form here. So we need to grab our form wrapper, which is just class full. And then each field needs to be like this. Email. Rams email hint. Required true. Okay, so that's that one. And then this is the password. Required true. Autofocus no. Auto complete current password. And it's a password field. Okay, and then we need our submit wrapper. So we don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. So let's get rid of this piece and then this form actually goes in there. Okay. Don't need that. Don't need that. This bit that we can add later. Sign in. Cool. Now we can actually use that secondary button here. That's going to be our sign up or forgot your password. Okay, so we're going to do that. So now we should have a forgot password button and then we should also have a sign up button. Same thing here. 
and that's going to be the sign up path. And these can go. And that is our sign in. Now sign up. That needs a fix. Forgot password. That needs a fix. Sign up. Okay, let's see if we can log in though with our builder details. Sweet. What's going on here? Have I stuffed up that form? Yes, I have. Of course I have. <clears throat> there we go. So sign in shouldn't take you to this part. It should take you to here. So all of this is nonsense for now. So if we just change this to projects slash index, sign out of there. Copy there. Paste that. There we go. All right, logged in, you can sign out, you need to fix that little guy. And that's it. That is pretty much at the MVP stage. The rest of it is just a bit of cleanup. So let's just quickly do this, inline flex. See if that fixes it. What's going on here? So that's a form. Form class button two. That's not right. Form class button two. All right. What are you doing there, mate? So we have to assign to the actual form. Okay. Let me have a look at how to do that. All right. So you just have to add a form class in here. So that goes, where does that live? the HTML options so that lives in here. And that's the button. So let's see, there we go. And then let's just go here, margin right. There we go, sign out. Now the sign out, after sign out, to sessions path. We should redirect that. Why is that not doing it now? Ah, oh, it's probably because I've done that there. Go away. Let me just remove this. Yep, okay, that works now. Just had to tidy this up. I just removed all the brackets. And that seemed to work there. Sign out's working. All right, that's the end. That's the end. Everything else is a bit repetitive. So let's have a look at what we've achieved. So we've set up to create and fix this Excel kind of PDF thing that doesn't really have much functionality. And we've ended up with this. So we've got our sign in screen, sign in. We now have our projects. So we have multiple projects. We jump into one of these. Now we can see in here, we can see all the sub projects. We can see quotes, we can see invoices. We can jump into each project and then each space. And inside of each space, we can see all the finishes and colors and items and we can comment on them. And we can do all the things that we need to do. We can click on the links and then loads. They need to fix their, their performance. Um, we can leave a comment here. Bang that out. Um, and it's all using Rails. And this took, realistically, it took me a couple of, let's call it two days worth of actual time. And very simple. 
So I haven't done a Rails project like this in a long time. I've been using Rails as an API only, but when using it like this, you can skip through so much boilerplate, especially when you just want to test something. If you want to test a, an idea out really quickly, you're just using the ERB. You have access to all the models right there. You don't have to go and pass, change the API to pass it through. Just You just access it right in the view. Now, maintenance long-term, I don't know. I don't know how that will work, but definitely when you want to just quickly smash out an idea, this is this feels like the way to go for me. Um, and actually there is one more thing that we will do in the next one. And that is actually deploying this. So let's leave it at that. And I will see you for the next one. Catch you later.